Hot fix! We got a hot fix! Update just came out today, and I'm gonna be going over it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, I am Ulan Gaming, and uh, I'm kinda sad that I didn't get to this and, and post it out a couple hours earlier because it happened while I was asleep. But uh, nothing I can do about that. That's just what happens when you work the night shift. All right now, let's get into it. Hello, Explorers. Welcome to another update for Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition. This one is smaller than usual, but we didn't want to wait. Yeah, no, there, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that could be updated, so I am, I'm very happy for this. Uh, lot, lots of visual bugs uh, happening. Uh, this, this is a welcome sight here. Welcome. Uh, thank you for sharing yet another uh, major milestone in Age of Empires with us. Hope you enjoy all the changes and look forward to sharing in all the adventures you come. All right. Uh, game, stability and performance, fist an issue that prevented the game from booting if the installation patch contains, okay, I don't know what that means, uh, fixed a crash in mox, it, max population challenge, okay, fixed a crash when a player disconnects while loading into a multiplayer game, thank fuck, one player would, like, leave, um, while, while loading, and then everybody's game would freeze and then kick you out, so I'm glad this is gone, or, you know, supposedly. Uh, fixed various rare crashes. Cool. Like, we'd love to see it. Graphics. Community Plaza. Fixed issue with Community Plaza destruction. Okay. Uh, redesigns the Revolution, Trade Monopoly, King of the Hill, and, uh, and Economy Victory. Notification pop-ups to be less intrusive. Awesome. Uh, less intrusive things are, are better. UI added an option to set transparent effect on the HF window to allow improved map visibility. Oh, you don't need a mod for it anymore. Oh, that's awesome. This feature was based on a popular mod created by AZMK and implemented to address feedback from the community. This option can be found within the UI options under Game UI Options header. That is so nice. That is so nice. All right, I'm going to put that on for sure. Um... Fix for age up menu resource cost display, not updating immediately from red to white when required resources are met. I actually noticed this. I actually noticed this. You had to just like mash the button because you couldn't see your resources and it wouldn't tell you uh, properly when a. Uh... Uh, it, it, it like it, it this is only like a recent thing where like your age up option would not like update. You had to like watch the the OK button like, on the bottom to see whether or not you could actually, uh, at the bottom of the screen to see if you actually had the resources. <sighs> Boy, I just woke up. Sorry if I, uh, if I sound, uh, a little yawny right now, you know? Alright, uh, removes tech effects causing incorrect rollover tooltip text when United States Army is sent. I'm not sure what that means, but whatever. Uh, fixed an issue for the game summary screen not displaying the map name, image, and description after loading a save game that was saved from a, a game chosen from a map set. Wait, what? Whatever. Uh, fixed an issue where the game summary screen was not correct within the post-game summary screen. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, fix navigation issues within photo mode and uh, when using keyboard navigation, fix tech tree fixes, uh, various tech tree fixes, various localization fixes. Hotkeys removes duplicated hotkeys for fixed gun and depot. Okay. Uh, added hotkey support for find fattened hurtable. Find all fattened hurtables. These are unbound by default. Happy farming. Huh. That's pretty cool, actually. That's really cool. So you can, uh, you, you, don't, you don't need to search individually one by one for, for cows that are full. You can just be like, all cows that are full, go go here. That's that's really cool. That's a, that's a really good hockey idea, actually. I don't, th I don't know how, how many people are going to use that because I don't know how many people actually livestock boom. But, I mean, hey, more options the better, right? Tycoon mode. I've never actually played tycoon mode. Uh, I, I haven't gotten around to it. I, I'm more of just like the standard supremacy beat-em-up kind of guy. Uh, added new names for each tycoon package type. Added uh, added tycoon package names to purchase notifications. Uh, update. I, I don't know what any of this stuff is. So uh, uh, updated notification text when selecting restricted buildings during active ceasefire. Added strike through to score panel to signify out players will uh, while preserving their score display. So uh, if you guys are um, if you guys 
play Tycoon, then you'll know more about these changes than I do, because I have not even touched it. Nor do I really, really plan to, not honestly. All right, civilization balance. This is this is the meaty, juicy stuff. Uh, deflect aura units with deflect. So this is the um. So so, so this is the uh the, the papal ability for the most part, where they absorb some of the damage. Um. No longer protect artillery. Except the Papal Bombard, which already only protect, uh, protects artillery. That is super cool. Okay, so yeah, no, if, if there were like Papal Guards near your Falconets, then your Falconets just couldn't die. It was it was nuts. Uh, so glad, glad to see that change. That is a very, very solid change. Irish Brigadier, the mercenaries that uh, Malta is famous for sending that promote. Uh, added missing cavalry and shock infantry multipliers. Oh, wow, they got a buff. I'm kind of surprised by that. But hey, yeah, whatever. Uh, corrected erroneous tooltip. Jaeger mercenary. Oh, they're changing Jaegers. Fixed a bug where it did not benefit from the counter infantry rifling. They didn't benefit from counter infantry rifling? What? Wow. Okay, well, now they do. So that's cool. Winged Hussar, Vassal Royal House, Winged Hussar delivered by shipments and technologies, now has identical stats to the unit trained from Vassal Royal House trading posts. Okay, got it. So yeah, the, the, the shipments unit and the trained unit weren't the same, now they are. Awesome. Boyar, Finner Royal House. These are, if I'm not mistaken, uh, kind of like, uh, they're, they're, they're Hussar that promote. Uh, now inflicts 1.25 to artillery. Cool, sure. Just just make... Yeah, yeah, look, guys, let's just make all of the uh, royal house units that everybody complains about even better. Uh, Lit uh, Litka Tartar uh, from some kind of royal house. Uh, reduced damage to 12.5 from 16. Oh, cool, we got a damage nerf. All right, cool. Yeah, sure. I'm all for those. Uh, I'm not sure what the Lipka Tartar is. I, I, I've never seen them before, I don't think. Uh, the Dervish! Ah, the Sudanese Dervish! They're changed now. Now properly inflicts reduced damage to skirmisher types. Wow. So they nerfed Dervish, but then the nerf didn't work. And so now they're actually nerfing der the, the Dervish. It's kind of funny. Uh, Bosniaks. Oh, uh, Bosniaks, I believe, are also cavalry that promote. Uh, hit points reduced to 550 from 600. Damage reduced to 45 from 50. Cost increased to 350 from 300. So, pretty solid nerf from the Bosniaks. They do they have 50 less health, 5 less damage, and 50 more coin cost. Or, yeah, yeah. Armored Pistolier. Oh no, they're, t they're, they're hitting my boys. Range damage reduced to 45 from 53. Melee damage reduced to 25 from 37. Oh my god, that is a huge nerf. Like, a justified nerf, but holy fuck. Oh my god, armored pistoliers were nuts, but I loved using them. No. Oh. Okay, fine, fine, fine. You can have, you can have your armored pistolier nerf. <sighs> Sorry about that. All right. The Hajduk Outlaw. Corrected range from 18 from 13. Corrected damage to 13 from 18. <laughs> so it just swaps the <laughs> just swaps the damage and range. That's funny. Uh, is no longer being rolled on non-European maps. Previously was erroneously in the mercenary rotation. Ah, okay. Got it. So I'm, I'm pretty sure this is one of the, uh, the, the like a skirmisher type, if I'm not mistaken. The Hajduk. Uh, the Krabat, I do know that the Krabat is a uh, hand cavalry unit. Uh, halved attack, hand attack and uh, damage to make this novel unit type more fair against skirmisher types. Halved hand attack? But isn't it like a hand cavalry? Uh, but increased cavalry multipliers, so no overall damage change against cavalry. Now properly also counters shock infantry. Cost okay, so it's basically now um, it's turned into a Chinako from from my understanding. It's a cavalry unit that still that performs well against skirmisher types, but also fights against uh, cavalry super well. So okay, yeah. 
Cost increased to 150 coin from 140, now properly benefits from the uh, Carabinieri technology. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, technology cost uh, cost corrected to intended value 200 wood, food, and coin from just 200 wood. Uh, I'm not sure what this one does. I, I'm, I actually am not super familiar with the royal houses. I haven't really played with any of them. Uh, nor do I know what each of them are and provide. So, so there's that. Uh, long lines fixed an issue causing the long lines tech to be available an age later than usual. Okay, don't know what long lines was. Cards, water ceremony. Uh, water ceremony is the card that natives have access to that uh, boosts naval ships in combats. No longer benefits mercenary warships, such as the mighty battleship. Ah! Wow, that'd be kind of crazy. You can get, like, uh, if you manage to get your hands on a battleship and then water ceremony it, it's already, like, fucking, like, solos entire ship armies. Uh, negative lore now makes native technologies 20% cheaper. Previously removed any coin cost. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All you people who are, uh, uh, all, all you people running native lore are gonna have a big surprise for you today. This means you can no longer just do your free fucking, like, shipments or uh, get your 600 wood force. This, this is, uh, this is big. This is really big. Uh, native lore got nerfed hard. Holy shit. Uh, fencing school no longer boosts warrior priest creation speed. Yep, yep, we didn't know about that one. Maltese civilization uh civilization bonus now properly improves fire throwers and heavy cannon hit points by two percent with each card shipped yes 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 this is what we needed fire throwers were supposed to get the buff but they didn't and now they do and that is just so fucking nice that is so nice uh, they they are already one of the best units that Malta had, even without the HP bonus. But now they're really up there, you know. Fire thrower ranged armor reduced from thirty to thirty five percent from forty. Aww, what? I mean, I, I suppose it's supposed to be an exchange for the HP, but still, that that is a shame because I love the super high range resistance of fire throwers. They'll still like shred skirmishers and and musketeers though, so it's fine. Uh, fixed gun is now a bit more relaxed about where it can be replaced on them. Finally, just finally, and now properly contributes towards in-game score. Oh, it didn't before. Huh. Okay, so the problem with fixed guns is that they were really cool, but like a fucking shrub would stop you from placing it there, and you would need to uh, to, to place it somewhere else. And it was really annoying because like any of your other units can just walk through or over the shrub, but your fixed gun couldn't place it in. Uh, now, now, now it should be uh, notably easier, which is nothing but good changes here. Depots now would properly contribute to the in-game score. Is this why? Um, is it's fixed guns and depots? Is this why I always had lower score than other people as Malta? Because whenever I spend resources on a fixed gun or depot, it's essentially lowering my lowering my score. Wow. Okay. Commandery wagon now builds faster like other wagons. Cool. All right. Uh, cards. This is what I'm super excited about. German tongue. Here we go. Re cost reduced to 450 wood from 500. Arrives in 40 seconds, down from 60. Okay. Uh, German tongue. 450 wood is still a lot of wood, and I don't know how much I still I want to send that. I don't know if this is a card that I still want to send regularly. I know a lot of people do send German Tongue with Malta, like, very early in every game, but I personally have had a lot more success in not sending it. Uh, I'm not sure that this change here is a change... It is enough of a change that it's going to make me want to send the card, but it does mean that if you age up with the Quartermaster, you could get the German Tongue with, for only 50 wood. So there, there is that. Uh, it's it's definitely a good change. It's a step in the right direction. Uh, I definitely approve of the change. I just don't know if it's going to be enough. Only time will tell, I suppose. Uh, Vittoriosa 
effects tweaked to arrives fast. Okay, so this was the card that uh, boosted the max number of town centers and then halved the cost. Effect tweaks to arrives fast. It did arrive fast before. Makes settlers and town centers significantly cheaper. Uh, was previously arrives fast, enables you to construct an additional town center and makes settlers significantly cheaper. Uh, okay, so you no longer get access to a fourth town center, but you still get the cheap settlers, and now your town centers are cheaper as well. Honestly, I consider this a huge buff, because I never found myself needing or making four town centers as Malta, like, ever. Uh, and was it be because they're so expensive, and I had to make military, because you're just getting to age three, and you probably have to deal with the two Falk shipment coming up soon, and so you need like, military right away. I, I just never found too much purpose to uh, the to the extra town center limit. Uh, so being able to make town centers cheaper is actually going to like uh, encourage me to make town centers more, because previously I'd just age up with the bishop and call it a day and still hit 99 villagers super fast. Uh, so... Uh, this effects, I, I consider this a buff. I consider this a buff, personally. They can only have three town centers as opposed to four, but, like, combination Victoriosa with Medicine is still going to just give you a shit ton of settlers for super, super cheap. And now I'm more likely to hit the third, to get the th third town center up instead of just relying on the two. No. Uh. Aubergies. Okay, this is the effect that uh, gave commanderies extra hit points and supported population. Uh, commanderies now also support population and order units are less expensive! Holy fuck! Okay, 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 this is, uh, this is big. This is really, really big. Uh, this was the big problem with commanderies is that uh, you want is that they, it, it would be really cool to make like a, a commandery build because command because the commandery units are really really cool that you get access to, but the units were not good enough for their for uh, were, were not good enough to constitute their extra high cost. But now with this card, that is reverted, so we, we can um, we can lower the cost of them. Uh, I wonder how much less expensive does it make them? Does it make them just a percentage less expensive, or does it make their cost go back down to their normal unit counterparts? I'm gonna I'm gonna have to test that around around a little bit. Eight fire throwers now ships nine fire throwers. Awesome, sure I'll take it. I like that card anyways. <laughs> Higher Irish brigadiers now ships Irish brigadiers with their intended stats. Uh, previously shipped as the uh, special variant. Not sure what that means. Okay. But I'm going to have to resend that and see what the, the stats are. Flintlock Rockets. Now increases the Sentinel stats and cost up by 35% from 25%. Charged attack damage reduced by 10%. Charged attack now inflicts 0 0.25 to artillery, down from 0 0.34. Okay, so this is a bit of a side grade, you know. Uh, they get an extra 10% in raw stats, but the charge attack itself is reduced by 10%. I actually think the charge attack being reduced by 10% is to make sure that the charge attack does the exact same damage that it did before. So the charge attack isn't changed, but the rest of their raw stats are. Uh, 35% is... So they're, they're essentially getting a 10% boost. They're, they're getting a 10% boost. Um... Although it's actually an 11.5% boost uh, if you take into account their aura. Uh, so th this is this is good. This is good. This is very good. I don't want to give a judgment on it just yet because I don't know how how awesome Sentinels are going to be with this. Uh, I'm going to refrain on it, but I definitely it's definitely a positive change because Sentinels needed that little boost for sure. Uh, Sentinels were at the point, uh, or at the place where uh, a lot of people hate them. A, a lot of people hate them because they're not pop efficient, but they are very resource efficient, and that is what they're. They, and that is that is like the kind of their point um, is that they're they're very resource efficient for how good they are, but not pop efficient. And these guys, these guys like beat Ashigaru in shootouts in the second age. If you can how if you can find a way to house them, and they're they're really really impressive units uh, in, in the early game. Uh, and now, uh, and and now, uh, they they they'll hopefully be a little bit more impressive in the late game now as well. All right, squires, military building work rate improved to eighty percent from seventy. Whoa, they buffed it. They they buffed squires. 
Why? It was already the best upgrade in the game! <laughs> what? Okay, yeah, I will take that. Yes, please. Okay, um... Papal Bull, age 2. The Knights of the Hospital tech. Uh, this, th I believe this one is what the one that spawns a hospitaler. Uh, for each two hospitals. Uh, unlocks now... Uh, unlock cost is now 1,500 wood. What the fuck? But instead ships one hospital for each hospital... Up, to, uh, up from one hospital for every two hospitals, or uh, one hospitaler for every two hospitals. This should help with the uh, start army in the treaty game mode. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Uh, I always kind of assumed that Papal Bull was a treaty thing, and now this is basically confirmed. Um, so the cost for getting 25 hospitalers has gone from 5,000 wood and 250 food to um 4000 wood so they they shaved off 1000 wood and the need to and a whole bunch of villager seconds basically so yeah that's cool yeah cuz 2500 for 25 hospitals and 1100 for the upgrade which is cool awesome merchant republics moved to h1 no longer grants a trade post by oh oh that's not good well, shit, I'm gonna have to figure out how to how to balance, how to play around that then. On the other hand, it actually allows me to get my second trade post up way earlier, which is kind of cool. Wait, no, it doesn't because it doesn't, it doesn't give a fucking wagon anymore, huh? Merchant Republics um, was a card that I used extensively in my ATP uh, because it gave me my third trade post and then set up the trade post. Boom. I don't know if I like this change, honestly. I think it's kind of a nerf. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it means that I'm going to have to get a little bit more wood to get my ATP start going, it looks like. That's that's uh, not, not always great. Especially because Merchant Republics doesn't actually uh, lower the cost of trade posts like ATP does. We'll have to see. Uh, other than that, like, most of these changes are very, very nice. I, I love Victor Victoriosa is now so much better. Og uh, Obger, uh, the Aubergs, uh, yeah, Aubergs, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, this right here is huge, and I'm really happy about it. I'm gonna have to see how much it actually lowers the cost by, but, you know, that could mean that a commander rebuild is now, like, you know, an option, which is, which is something that I heavily approve of. All right, Italians, Papal Guard, Cavalry Damage Multiplier increased to 3.5 from 3, okay. Papal Zuave increased range attack from to 32 from 21, Jesus. It increased hit points to 300 from 215. Apparently Zuave needed a, a ton of buffs. It's never something I've really thought about with the Zuave type units, but whatever. <laughs> Leonardo's tank, if you know how to get it, it's a bit stronger now, but don't tell anyone. Okay, you know we're going to have to check this out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I love devs like this. Lombard, investment caps increased to 3,000 from 1,500. Oh, very cool. Uh, th this is just a, a nice quality of life from Italian players. I know uh, I, I know a lot of Italian players uh, hate that they have to micromanage this because the, 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 your investment just runs out so fast and you have to keep doing it over and over and over again. So that should just be a nice quality of life for people. Basilica. Basilica shipments of spies and priests now take 30 seconds to arrive, down from 60. Okay. Cards. The Ufizi now causes Lombards to always trickle a static 0.5 XP when converting investments, regardless of how many investments are invested. Previously trickled 0.4 XP per second for each different resource, totaling 1.2 XP per second. Okay, so that's a that's a big nerf to the Lombards. Holy shit! Uh, the Ufizi card that uh, gave Lombards their XP trickle is severely nerfed. Okay, got it. Papal Arsenal. Basilica shipment. <clears throat> <clears throat> Alright, Papal Arsenal. 
The silk is shipment arrival speed improvement reduced from 30 to 33 percent from 50 percent. Okay. Uh, advanced politicians. The advanced governor now delivers one outpost and 300 coin, changed from two outposts and 200 coin. Got it. So uh, you no longer get super tanky defenses, but you uh, but you also no longer need to mine any coin in order to get to H3. Cool. To be honest, I kind of think the two outposts was better because that was like an extra 250 resources instead of just an extra 100 resources. I kind of feel like they could have done like one outpost and 400 coin and been okay with it and, and still been okay. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Team Marco Polo Voyages moved to age two. Uh oh! <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Marco Polo Voyages was the, um, the, the, the card that all the Italy players were sending in age one where uh, it would just light up the whole fucking map and then make everybody's treasure awards uh, double. Now it's in age two, so it's going to be more of a tactical play. You know, you're going to judge, you're going to look at the treasures on the, that you've seen on the map, judge the treasures you've already got, and maybe you've already picked up 440 coin, and you're like, hey, this is going to be a very valuable card. It's going to give me, it's going to give like your teammate 440 extra coin and then you like a shit ton of XP, blah, 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 blah. So uh, now it has gone from a card that you just always send to probably a, a more tactical card that you send to boost a, a, an insane treasure you already have or are, uh, or see and are about to get. Um, and you're going to want to like judge whether or not you send this card over uh, 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 over your actual age two shipments, so th this is interesting. Uh, I I think it's still a very good card. Uh, this uh, this was a very sizable nerf to it, uh, but now it's a very good card that you need to judge whether or not you want to send. So there you go. Uh, Albanian company age three now delivers three Stradiots and four Bosniaks down from four Stradiots and four Bosniaks. Okay. Uh, Merchant Republic's move to age one no longer granted trade post back then. So not much, not not much uh, change to the Italy, the Italians. Lots of changes for Malta. Lots of big changes for Malta. Uh, Victoriosa, German tongue got buffed. Aubrey, I'm really excited about this because I I, I want to see if I can get a commander rebuild going. Now. That that's that's the dream right here is to see if I can get a commander rebuild. Uh, no ships nine fire throw. I'm probably gonna make. A video that is all about the changes that Aubergs that, that Aubergs uh, affects. But yeah, we just have so many great things here. I'm a little sad about Merchant Republics. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can still keep my trade post alive. Uh, this is kind of the reason that I didn't want to. Uh, th this is kind of the reason I didn't want to pump out any uh, build orders yet for. Um, for any of my things, because I knew that there would be a lot of ch of things that were changing uh, in the game, so I, I I wanted to make sure I stayed ahead of it, but by making new build orders, but didn't have any uh, in depth videos that would probably be uh, severely, you know, as that, that would probably be severely uh, what is it outdated, like pretty much instantaneously, and this, that's exactly why. Uh, so that is going to be it for this. Yeah, Merchant Republics. Okay, yeah, no. Big buffs to fire throwers. I love it. Ethiopians. Civilization starting cattle reduced to three from four. What? Why, though? Because, like, it, 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 I'm pretty sure Ethiopia struggles to get uh, cattle anyways because they don't get one with every free shipment. Maybe they're reducing houses as well, but I'm not sure that's that this is entirely necessary, but, you know, okay. I don't play Ethiopia, so I'll take it. Uh, units and buildings, the Mountain Monastery, reduced the cost to 150 from 170, now gathers mines within, uh, uh, within at 0 0.86 resources per second up to 0 0.72. Aubens also gather at this improved speed. Huh, okay, cool. All right, yeah, that, that's that's cool. That's a good change. Mountain Monastery buffed. There you go. Sebastopol Mortar damage reduced to three hundred in the Fortress Age from five hundred, but DPS is restored to normal in the Industrial Age. Ooh, okay, got it. Okay, so uh, the Sebastopol Mortar 
uh, it still has its base stats in the industrial age, but now, uh, uh, but but now it has a negative stat modifier in the third age to keep it a little bit more balanced. Interesting. Got it. Uh, Sebastopol Mortar is a, is an absolute beast of an artillery unit, so I don't mind this at all. Four villagers removed from homestead. Oh wow, they lost four villagers. Wow. Oh wait, no. Yeah, yeah okay. Hausa. Starting cattle reduced to three from four. Honestly, that doesn't affect Hausa, like, at all. They get so much free cattle anyways. Shipments. Uh, experience required for each shipment increased by 8%. Oh, okay, so this is going to definitely fuck with a lot of Hausa timings. Uh, they're going to have to get used to that change, big time. Units and buildings. Griot. Noise attack rate of fire effect now reduces enemy DPS by 40%. Wait, what? down from 50%. Oh, wait, no, okay. Now reduces DPS by 40% down from 50. So it doesn't have your uh, your attack speed now. It, it decreases by 40%. Improved by 1.5 area of effects from the Maguzawa card, down from 2. Okay, so uh, Griots now have smaller area of effects and also lower DPS less. So just, yeah, just Griot nerf. Straight up, Griot nerf. Love it. Uh, Lafiti Knight, adjusted stats to 375 hit points from 430, and 25 attack from 22. Okay, so they're making it a little bit more in line with an actual Hussar now. That's good, because 430 base HP was fucking ludicrous for, for Lafiti Knights. It really, really was. Uh, I am okay with these changes. Uh, they lost three villagers in Age 1 and four villagers from Age 2. Whoa! Hold these these are big nerfs to Ethiopia and Hausa. God. Oh, oh, oh wait, no, okay. Uh, I I take it back. <coughs> I take it back. They lost four villagers, but gained three villagers. Got it. Okay, so that's actually a buff for Hausa. Got it, yeah. Three three villagers age one is better than four villagers age two. Straight up. Additional minor changes. General, fix an issue where certain human treasure guardians could not be converted using the recruit guardian ability. Oh! Okay, so this was something that me and my buddies had noticed, and we assumed that it was an added feature that was attempting that, that was in the game for the purpose of like nerfing uh, the war chiefs and making it so that they can't so that they can't get like fucking lanchnecks from treasure guardians but it looks like you were always supposed to be able to convert lanchnecks as treasure guardians and now you can so uh all, all fear the uh all fear the age two aztec european lanchneck boom or the, the european lanchnecked uh push that, that'll be very very funny uh, reduced fixed guns to minimum range to line up... Uh, uh, sorry, reduced fixed gun minimum range to line up better with the decal being displayed is now 14 from 18. Oh, okay, so uh, they reduced the fixed gun minimum range, so you're more likely to actually shoot things. Awesome. Uh, you, you things have to get closer to your mortar before it stops shooting. That is... Uh, it, it, Bravo, bravo. You now have to be a bit within regular range in order to, uh, uh, within a regular's range in order to, uh, to not, to not get hit by that. That's awesome because the fixed gun minimum range was like, it felt fucking huge. Fixed gun no longer damages Agra's mother nature treasure guardians when shooting enemies nearby them, but can still do so if instructed to attack them. Sweet. Okay. The, I, I'd never run into this, but that sounds really annoying. Wait, no, I actually have run into it once. Uh, where my fixed gun pissed off an entire treasure guardian, uh, like an entire troop of treasure guardians, and they almost killed my fixed gun. I forgot about that. All right, hidden advanced rollover on wall guns. Uh, sorry, hidden advanced rollover on wall guns to make it less confusing. What? I'm not sure uh, what what this. Wall guns is referring to the Sentinel card that um, th that boosts HP that, that that boosts range and attack on uh, wall, wall near walls. It says hidden advanced rollover on wall guns to make it less confusing. That's yeah. I'm not sure what that. We're gonna have to take a look at wall guns again. It seems. Military wagon may now properly construct commanderies. Dope. Okay, so if I have a. Uh, a teammate that's sending me a military wagon, I can build commanders with it. Uh, 
Fixed gun wagon now has slightly reduced obstruction radius, so has fewer pathing issues in built up bases and areas with lots of animals. Okay, cool. Yeah, sure. I'll take it. Fixed a bug where commander units had 10% extra build limit and kill XP uh, uh, applies twice. Wait, what? Uh, sorry. Fixed in a bug where commander units had 10% extra build and kill XP applies twice. Should be applied once for 10% total as they are 10% more expensive. Okay. I'm not sure what that means, but sure. Improves commandery build bounty from seven to 70 from 35. Kill bounty adjusted accordingly. Oh, wow. So they're doubling the XP you get from building a commandery. That... This is honestly probably a really big jump start into a commandery build. They, they, if you want to make a commandery build, this is probably a huge jump start for it. Uh, I, I wholeheartedly approve of this, honestly. It also makes them like more interesting targets for your opponents rather than just destroying a stable. So, hey, I'm, I'm all for this. Uh, Italian royalist politician... Now uh, grants veteran and guard upgrades for royal musketeers it delivers upon reaching the Imperial Age. Wow, okay. Advanced Politician's card now gives it, and it causes it to give royal dragoons instead. Okay, interesting. Knights of Malta now properly displays a number on its icon indicating how many units will be shipped. Knights of Malta is the card I used in my fast top hat strategy to ship 20 Hospitallers from, uh, by having four forts. In, in the by the 13 and a half minute mark adjusted soldado mortar charged action accordingly same as sentinels what? oh okay so uh they they're making soldados and sentinels have the exact same like charge ability interesting uh, i'm i'm sure this is probably a nerf to the soldado to the soldado ability uh, Yabasume now properly infix, it inflicts time 7 to fix guns. Oh god, that's terrifying. Okay. Uh, fix guns, well, gotta watch out for the Yabasume. <laughs> Senga and Zebu cattle now properly count towards economic score. Oh, they didn't before, now they do. Cool. Uh, Cossack Daredevil Infantry now properly tagged as Gunpowder Infantry. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure what that one is. I think Cossack Daredevils are uh, an outlaw, if I'm not mistaken. Fixed a string error for prize bowl, indicating that it still contained 900 food, now 700. Okay, cool. France fixed an issue where some trading posts failed to spawn. Awesome. Unknown fixed an issue where sometimes one player wouldn't spawn in a 1v1. Ongoing investigation. Uh, community reported issues. Right, so this is what they're focusing on, is re reported issues, which honestly makes sense because the community is going to find a lot more issues than they had seen uh, with all of the new civilizations and maps. So, your reports continue being crucial to our prioritization and implement implementation of fixes and features in the game. Uh, so yeah, this is basically them saying, hey, we uh, we are focusing on on fi on fixing and putting out the fires that you guys find. So that's, that's cool. I like that. Uh, it makes them more responsive to the community, as far as I'm concerned. Or at least it's them saying that they're trying to be more responsive to the community, which they already have been, as far as I can tell. Uh, but honestly, this was a fantastic change. As, at, from, from a multiplayer's perspective, this was a much-needed change, because uh, fire throwers getting the 2% hit points is huge. Um, this is kind of sad, but I mean, sure, whatever. I'll take it for the 2% for the, for the hit points. Uh, this this was always a big issue. Uh, the commandery back. Uh, I don't really. I don't. I never really sent the tongues that much, so it's hard to say. It, it's, I find it a little odd that all of the other tongues are still the exact same cost. But uh, Aubergs, this is amazing. Uh, it do, it makes commanderies no longer affect population, but. If the uh, if the order units being less expensive is like a big is is like a big boost, then you could have some pretty cheap hussars running around potentially. And this is something that I'm going to have to test out by quite a bit. I'm pro I'll probably make a video all about it, showing off every single uh, sh showing off every single uh, unit 
Uh, something to keep in mind, actually, is if it reduces the cost by a lot, like like a significant amount, then it'll reduce the cost of the settler wagons as well. So you might be able to do German tongue into Aubergs and get some kind of boom going from uh, from two commanderies. So that that's really cool. Uh, this this was just a, a huge thing. Uh, Sentinels now being uh, now being boosted by a, that little bit by that ten percent extra bit. Uh, we're gonna see how that plays out for sure. Um, unfortunately, Merchant Republics got moved, uh, no longer uh, grants a trading post. That really sucks, but it's something I'm just gonna have to work around uh, and try to and try to have a solution for uh, when I do my ATP strats. So we will see how much that affects it. Uh, for all of you treaty players out there, uh, Papal Bull is going to be a little bit more uh, more of a, an enticing pick. So that is it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great day and goodbye. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This was, as ever, a ton of fun to make. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please do consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. And have a great day.